Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello again. Uh, we're live. We're live every night here on the Instagram, pardon me. Um, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Sydney time. I'm doing a live stream on here every single night. She's so fine. <laughs> First to join. 45 Finn, good to see you. Uh, the live stream is just about to kick off. We're just warming up with a bit of a cheeky pre-dram, if you like. Whiskey Gaucho, Johnny Edwards, Just Dramming. Thanks everyone for, for joining in. Petros, thanks for joining in. There's lots to go over tonight. I don't have to get through it all particularly tonight. Uh, Ezra Finn, Robert Akers, good to see you. Hope you're well. I don't have to get to all of it tonight, but there's a few things I definitely want to get um, uh, touch on tonight, which are really important uh, and relate to this week and relate to upcoming actually next week as well. Uh, so a few things to go over tonight, a few things to chat about. Um, Sun's out, guns out. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> uh, oh, Petros. <laughs> mate, I know what you have to deal with, so I, I can I can sympathize with you on that one. It's it's also my favorite 30 minutes. So this is, um. there's a few things to go over tonight. I'm running out of desk space on this desk at the moment, and I've got a few things I want to show you uh, in a bit, which is um uh, which is really um quite quite crucial actually. Oh, thanks Gaucho, thanks. Yes, it's not, I haven't got any product in it right now, but uh, I've tidied up a bit today, which is uh, what I need to do. Vinci, thanks for joining. Jamie Poos, thanks for joining. I swear I just enjoy saying Poos. Um, Johnny Edwards, um, you're missing The Bachelor for this. It better be good. <laughs> yes, yes, The Bachelor, yes. Uh, Andrew Power, trumpet joined. Mate, Andrew Power, I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're well. Um, a few things to go over tonight uh, for, the, for the daily live stream. For those who have not tuned in before, Andrew, I know I haven't seen you in here before. Um, this is every single night. I've been in live every single night now for about five or six weeks, almost five weeks. Uh, yeah, no, almost six weeks, six weeks now. Um, every single night, 8 p.m. We talk a bit about whiskey. We learn a few things. You ask a few questions and that's what it's about. Um, Phil001, thanks for joining. So... Uh, I've started tonight with a little bit of a um, Bountiful Biscuit Bisque. This is the first subject I want to talk about. Now, I've mentioned this cask before. It was nothing remarkable about it, actually. 77.48, Bountiful Biscuit Bisque was the name on this one. Um, a spicy and dry single cask. Now, I've just started with that one for good reason. This is the one that inspired me to write that article about where is that diesel note in whiskey come from. Some whiskeys have a diesel note. Um... Did you find your marker with which to mark your hat and... Rob, it's somewhere in this office. It's somewhere on this desk. This desk is overly crowded. I move all the stuff away for this live stream. Uh, tomorrow and Friday. Gaucho, yes, every day. Um, uh, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew Blashford, 79. Thank you for joining the stream. Live every night here on the SMWS stream. Talk a bit about whiskey. Answer some of your questions. But I just want to, before I get too interrupted, I want to talk a little bit about why I picked this one out. Uh, for those who saw the stream a couple of nights back, two or three nights ago, uh, I had Matthew Wooler from Dram Nation join me. We did a dual live stream together in the office here. Lots of fun. We talked about Cornography. 140.1 Cornography. I'll talk a bit more about that cask tonight, actually. Um, that was, um, that was the Dram we opened on the day and tasted it that night, which was fantastic. Thank you, Gaucho. Love the feedback. Uh, after that stream finished, he walked over to my whiskey shelf of open bottles, which is on the other side of this camera, and went, and went, oh, what's this one? And picked up this, and he hadn't seen it before. And I said I was on June or something outturn, uh, May or June outturn, I can't remember. It was a couple of months ago. He said, oh, I don't, I don't remember tasting this, I don't remember seeing this. It was a Bountiful Biscuit Bisque, and we're like, oh, okay, well, uh, how come you, ha what did you, what did you miss? And he said, well, Okay, he poured himself about that much, about just a little dram was worth. And he loved it, loved it to bits. And said, oh, how do I get one of those? I'm gonna get one of those. I said, well, there aren't any of those left. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, there aren't any left. <laughs> it's sold out. That's what I want to talk about today. One little thing, just this is a little precursor to what we we're getting onto. Fraser, thanks for joining. Lex, thanks for joining. Oh, Lex Gatley, I haven't seen you in a while, mate. Hope you're well. Um, so, two points to, to be made about that. A... If you see something on an outturn or that you want to grab, grab it. I all too often hear that story of, oh, I meant to get it and it sold out. That's called single cask whiskey. If you meant to grab a Glenfiddich 12 and then it's sold out, it doesn't matter. Next week it'll be back again. 
That's that's called Glenfiddich. That's called core range c consistent whiskies. We're gonna talk about consistency another night. But in this case, with single cask whiskey, the quality has already been bottled. We have already passed panel. You can pick out what you want. It's like, but if there's one that you've got your eye on, I recommend grabbing it before you don't have the chance to grab it again. That's the most important part. Uh, thanks everyone who's been joining, by the way. Lex, like I said, Barry, ah, oh, Stuck and David joined. Good to see you. Um, this is a nightly live, nightly live stream. Every single night, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, here on the SMWS Instagram, every single night. This has been good fun. Oh, Rowan, you're back. Good to see you. Whiskey and music. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for joining in. We're talking about how if you see something, I just want to start with by saying if you see something on an outturn that catches your eye and you think, oh, I want to get that, then get it. Uh, it doesn't last. It's like these are single casks. We only got 12 of this one in the country. Now, this, is an, this statistically is an unremarkable whiskey. Now, I, I, that sounds like a cop-out. I don't mean it to be. 77.48, it's not a dot one, it's not a dot 100, it's just dot 48, okay, that's fine. 77, Glen Ord, Glen Ord Distillery. Who thinks Glen Ord is a sexy distillery? It's not, there's nothing sexy about Glen Ord, it makes the Singleton, it makes Singleton whiskey, mostly for the Asian market. We see a little bit of Singleton here in Australia, through, it's a Diageo distillery. It's a 10 year old refill bourbon hogshead. It's a refill, it's a bourbon hoggy, it's 10 years old, What's remarkable about that? Not much. Um, but that's not the point. He opened it, he tasted it and said, that's remarkable. So the point is, my second point here is, don't just hunt for the superstar casks. Dan Whiskey Woolly, thank you for joining. Adelaide Whiskey Lover, thank you for joining. It's, it's good to see so many people joining in live, thank you. Um, this is the nightly live stream for those who are just joining. Every single night at eight o'clock for the last five weeks, six weeks, every night. Every night I get the chance to do it, I do it. Uh, I think I have one night off and I was just not feeling well. Um, so the, the first point is if you want it, get it. The second point is if you don't, don't always just look out for the superstar cast. Because I actually had a discussion with a member about this earlier today, which sort of inspired today's discussion. Pardon me. Um, just sort of inspired today's discussion about how you often you get in that trap of hunting certain codes. Sort of like, well, I love my 29s and 33s and 1s and 10s and whatever whatever the codes are. But there's certain codes that are obviously superstar distilleries. They have a lot more profile. They have a lot more marketing, a lot more, um, a lot more effort into their single malts generally. This distillery doesn't. There's not much in terms of when it comes to that kind of distillery profile that they have that much, um, like they don't have much in the market for that. That doesn't exist. So it's sort of like, if I say to you, okay, here's an example. If I say Ardbeg Distillery, Ardbeg Distillery is, you know, it's like mythical these days. They have, they get the same amount of attention as a closed distillery almost. Uh, people love what they do. People love the, the spirit they make. Their special releases send everyone into a tailspin. Fantastic. Uh, yes, thank you for noticing Barley Brains. Yes, bit of a bit of a bit of an update, bit of a slight update. No more man bun, but they haven't got any products, so it's not really sitting right. Um, so it's it's a distillery like Ardbeg is a distillery that everyone goes, um, you know, like mental over. People lose their mind over Ardbeg. You know this. If you've seen whiskey nerds and whiskey collectors and people who love whiskey, uh, they go mental over it. How many people do you know go mental over Glen Ord? <laughs> I don't know any. I mean, I don't know anyone who goes sort of like, you know, like, oh, who goes the Singleton. Ooh, oh, I can't wait to get the latest Singleton. Well, the latest Glen Ord. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just the green bottle. <laughs> yeah. Johnny, you know. <laughs> yeah, people go mental for the green bottles. I know that. I know that. But I'm saying it's sort of like, uh, it's it's exciting for me because it's not a superstar cask. So there's something unique in there. Something going to be something fun to explore without being like, well, oh, I'm just going to hold out for the next 35-year-old Ardbeg or something. It's like... Sorry, the 35 year old Macallan. We don't see much 35 year old Ardbeg. We will see some older Macallans later this year, which is exciting. Uh, Distillery 24, that one. Not that I would know the codes, and I'm not allowed to really talk about those, am I? Oh, I don't know. We talk about it a bit more than we used to. Someone remarked on that at a tasting recently. Okay, second subject I want to go over whilst I'm enjoying that 77. It's a lovely 10 year old uh, from Distillery 77, a refill cask. 
super savory biscuits and like those arnots like arnot kind of milk biscuits but without the sugar coating bits just like just the biscuit and that diesel note there's that diesel note in there that industrial oh, i love it i love that i love that note in the whiskey raymond thanks for joining the stream i had a few questions um via direct message and otherwise uh from a few members asking about cornography uh, the 140.1, I've had about six or seven messages in the last two days since that stream. 140.1 Cornography, it's the first ever cask from Distillery 140. It's pretty dark in the bottle, that one. It's a pretty lovely cask, that one we tasted the other day with um with Matt Wooler in the stream, and for those who joined in. Jay Hodes, thanks for joining. Um, it's a Texas, uh, it's a Texas second fill barrique blue corn whiskey. Blue corn single malt, single cask whiskey. Yeah, cornography. <laughs> uh, uh, Dave, we'll, when we catch up, uh, I'll bring this with me. Um, this is um, this is a Texas blue corn whiskey. So a uh, blue corn cask, I should say, not blue corn whiskey. Um, so there's something there's something to be said about that. There's a few things there's a few things to discuss in there that I want to make clear. Oh, I almost knocked that glass over. Okay, one forty dot one hundred and fortieth single malt code in our lineage. Dot one, the first ever cask from that distillery. Uh, Dave, yes, you are correct. And I'll bring it on Sunday. Um, Whiskey Sec, Calte 99. Thanks for joining in. Ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can be late. We can just talk. We, we can, you can join in from here. We haven't missed, we haven't missed much. Bit of faffing around, really. Uh, Matt Music, thanks for joining. Ooh, before I go on, that's a really good question while we're talking about that bottling. Does anyone else use blue corn for single malt? Uh, I'm sure they do. Um, well, sorry, I'm sure other people, other distillers use blue corn, um, ex blue corn barrels. Yes, but there's some there's some ruling there when it comes to sort of like how how that spirit is used and uh, uh, how to how to classify it as a single malt coming out of America. That's a different that's a different story entirely, and the, uh, quite a complicated one. Um, so, um, is it all blue corn? Does using different corn mean it won't, it won't be, it won't be a single one? Okay. This is what I'm, this is why I'm here to clarify Jay Hodes and a, and a few others. And, um, people who have been asking me questions about this cask. I actually did just spill my, spill my whiskey. I knew that was going to happen. Okay. That's all right. It's only a tiny amount left of that glass. So, um, it's an ex blue corn whiskey Second fill barrique. Um, so it's not a blue corn whiskey. It is a single malt. Um, it's it's got it's technically a barley single malt, but matured for three years in an ex blue corn cask. Um, so I hope that clears that up a bit. But let's talk about what blue corn is. For those who don't know what blue corn is, it's a traditionally it's a Texan distillery. So it's a um, it's a hoppy maize. They call it flint corn. Uh, for those who want to learn a bit more about it, it's a flint corn. Now, the, the word flint corn came about because the surface of the corn that they harvest for this is super, super hard. <laughs> you all want to know about my haircut or whether I broke glass. <laughs> ah! Okay, I'll get to that. But we're, um, it's a flint corn, which means that the surface of the corn is quite stiff. It's almost flint-like. It's very, very hard corn. They're colored corns. They're sort of red corns, green corns, blue corns. There's not many that are actually, um, that are actually blue, like actually blue. So um, there, is a, there is one called dark blue corn, but that's so rarely harvested, um, especially even in Mexico, it's an uncommon type of corn varietal. Um, did you get a haircut after all the top dot comments? Ah, look. My hair last night was just a mess and I, I, I need to tidy it up because I've got this event coming up. I've got a few events coming up next week and need to look presentable. So I'm glad the ambassador's hair gets so much attention, but it's, um, it's really just, uh, it's, um, it just needed, it needed some fixing up there. The table deserves a taste too. That's true. That's true. Nice hair. Thank you. Hard corn. Yeah. Hard corn. It is hard corn. It is. It's, it's, they, they call it flint corn for that reason. It's impossibly hard. You can't bite into it. Uh, not with teeth anyway. You have to cut it. Um, <laughs> we're corny. That's what he's saying. It works well. You're making me corny. Ah, you'll pay for that one, Alex. 
Terrible joke. Hardcore corn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is called cornography. So, you know, you do the maths. That's you could you could call it that. Uh 63.6%. This is coming October outturn uh, bleh, October outturn, which is the first Friday of October, which the date of which escapes me, but I'm sure it's somewhere between the first and the sixth of October. I can't remember. Um and it's a Texan single cask single malt whiskey from an ex wine barrique cask that previously held blue corn wine blue corn whiskey so it couldn't get much more complicated if, I, if we tried really but the end result is a very delicious delectable uh single cask and the first ever cask from distillery 140. uh it's limit one per member i'm i'm afraid uh that's just because we want to make sure it goes around to as many people as possible there's an open bottle in my office, so I might share that with a few members coming up at different things. That's exciting. Um, try to be on here all week. Yeah, cool. Dr. Jason Lamb, thank you for joining Dr. Jason. Ah, very good question, Jay Hodes, whilst we're talking about this. Um, does Distillery 140 normally do a barley single malt? No, they don't. In fact, this is extremely uncommon for them. I've already checked all this out. They have done a few single casks like this before, there was a tiny little American only bottler that did a, a couple of single casks of barley single malt from these guys. Uh, but it's predominantly corn whiskey. It's predominantly corn based, like bourbon based, blue corn bourbons, if you like. Um, so yeah. Just Dramming, did you just say out corn? <sighs> I may as well have, I may as well have. I didn't spill it all after all. Look at that, lovely. I've tried that one before, it doesn't need any water. It is a bit hot at the start, but it doesn't need any water. Okay, we're onto the third topic already. Um, the third topic is, uh, some. I had two messages in the last 24 hours um, about the Brook Laddie night coming up. And it's a very small format event coming up in Sydney uh, on the 21st of September. Now, considering today is the 11th or something, oh, I can't remember what day it is, but today is the 10th or 11th or something. Um, the the Brook Laddie Nights at the Royal Automobile Club in Sydney were opening six of the rarest Brook Laddie whiskies ever. Ever bottled. Uh, for an, it's an incredible night. Um, as a Finn, come on, or share it with non-members. Oh, you could be join the society. Boom, there you go. Then you can buy a bottle as well. Uh, Gaucho, yes, there's a 140.2 in the works about your hair. <laughs> um, 11. Um, happy, happy rainbows. Thanks for joining the stream. Never forget. Never forget the man bun. Okay, so let's talk about this Brook Lady night. I'm not going to get distracted this time. Your comments are very funny, but... Oh, here we go. There's the first three. So, um, this is the first three whiskies, not necessarily in this order, but the first three I wanted to show you for tonight. Uh, by, the way, by the way, before you go anywhere, before I start on this, I've got a special surprise to show you right at the end. Anyway, we're gonna be opening up the 1984 Golder Still. That's a 1984, 23-year-old um, car strength Brook Laddie. Delicious. We're opening up the even rarer 1984 Redder Still. Distilled 1984, bottled 2007. That came out uh, 12, more, yeah, 12 years ago or something. Uh, yeah, that was bottled 12 years ago. Um, something pretty special there. And the third one in this in this series was the 1986 Blacker Still. This actually even precurses, this predates even Black Arts. So this came out even before Black Arts was a thing. This is like the original Black Arts, if you like. A 20-year-old full sherry cask, two decades in sherry release. Uh, it's probably as dark as the bottle is opaque. They're the first three in that lineup. Uh, the other ones in the series that I'm opening is, now this is pretty special. This is pretty special. Now, as you know, Brook Laddie make the Octomore series. It's their heavily peated run. It's, they make Brook Laddie, they make Port Charlotte, and they make Octomore. For those who are wondering at home, they're your three main spirit runs uh, out of Brook Laddie Distillery. 
They used to do uh, Lock and they used to have a spirit run, or they've been experimenting with a spirit run called Lockendale, which is just up the road from where they are. But that's another story. Um, where did I get these? Ah, uh, Jay Hodes. Years of careful collecting, honestly. The um, well, I'll be honest with you. The 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 gold is still the the twenty three year old gold. That's actually my personal bottle. I, I'm opening that because I want to share it around with people who enjoy it. Um. The, uh, the red Estelle was generously donated by a member. And the black Estelle was generously donated by one of our directors. There you go. Um, ah, okay, yeah. Um, I was surprised how light uh, the Pete on Event Horizon is. Well, actually, Robert, I've not tried it yet. I'll be honest. I've got a bottle sitting here. I've got a sealed bottle just sitting here. No, I did try it. I tried it at the distillery, which is where I bought it when I was over in Face Shield this year in May, but I'll be completely honest with you, I had a bit of a head cold that day and my palate was completely shot. So Event Horizon is the oldest Dr. Moore they've ever bottled, a 12 year old full sherry maturation. Uh, where did you try it, Robert? I'd be interested to hear that. The next one in the lineup, not again, not tasting order, but the next one I'll announce, is the dearly departed Cantina Mexicana, a 12 year old Cast strength, single cask, society bottling, sherry butt, a refill sherry cask from Distillery 127, which is Port Charlotte. And then to finish the uh, evening, well, to finish this this lineup, apart from the Welcome Dram, which is a Brook Lady as well, I'll be opening the one of 88 bottles ever yielded from the cask, a 27-year-old single cask uh, whiskey of a bygone era. From the from Brook Laddie. That's pretty cool. That's very, very cool. Um, that one's never well, here we go. I'll give you a nice closer look at that label. That's that's just that's just stunning. Um Whiskey of a bygone era. This was never available to members. Uh, this was never made available to members, I'm afraid. It was it wasn't even made available to Australia. I managed to um acquire this through our UK branch. Uh, if you know what I mean. I mean, I, I begged and pleaded and they sent me one bottle to share around with members. Um, single cask, single malt, Isla whiskey in celebration of 2019. That's very cool. Now, that's the six vintage or very rare Brook Ladies will be opening at that evening. And I hope you can join me. There's a few seats left. Uh, it's only a very small crowd though. It's going to be a very small crowd. And it's in the Pioneers Lounge at the, um, at the Royal Automobile Club. If I get a chance actually... I might broadcast a bit from there tomorrow to show you what the um, what the lounge looks like. So if you want to check it out. Uh, okay. Now, lastly, I want to show you a, a sneak peek at something coming up. Now, last couple of nights on here, I've been saying, oh, you know, the um, the menu for this Saturday's vaults tasting is uh, is locked away, is done. The design's done. I love these Brooklady tins. They're so solid. Uh, the, yeah, the menu's done. We're ready to go. And um, it's, you know, it's looking really solid. So I'm just going to answer a few questions before I reveal what's coming up. Very cool labels. Thank you, Ezra. Uh, a bit of options talk. After tasting the Bluegum Whiskey from a couple of months, nights ago, three days, to tonight, does the flavor profile change after leading the bottle air rate? Awesome question. Um, Andrew, power, not an awesome question. <laughs> yes, it did. It changed. Um, um, let me pour one. Actually, you know what? Whilst I'm here, you've asked the question. I may as well help out here. It'd be it'd be remiss of me not to. Has this changed? How's my palate changing it in the last couple of days as well? Let's have a look. Just a just a tiny bit. Oh wow. Okay, so that's that's really like tapered a bit, but in a really good way. If those who are watching like Cal who was watching the other night, it was really like the, the ethanol and the, 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 the vapor on that first sip were really just like in your face. Now it's really um cleared up a bit. Probably still needs a moment in the glass, but that's lovely. It's all polished. 
polished wood and herbal spices and ah yeah whiskey sec I don't mind these ones too bad yeah I mean I'm not getting the cola just yet Calte but I'm getting that like, I'm get definitely getting the licorice that spice those herbal herbal licorice and creaming soda is a good one as well I think that was Willis tasting note oh lovely I'll let that sit for another minute um, yeah, decanter might work, Jay Hodes. That's that's um, uh, you know, that's one I could look at. I might I might do a decanter. That's probably not a bad idea. Uh, okay, here we go. Time for you to get your first glimpse at the menu for Saturday. Now there is one ticket left. Um, so we're gonna leave that on the website until Friday morning because we need to absolutely confirm minimum twenty four hours before with the restaurant. Um, so. Yeah, at the beginning of the tasting session, that's right. So here it is, this is, I wanna show you that front cover. There's the restaurant menu for uh, Vaults 1682, the, the oldest and rarest whiskey tasting we've ever hosted in Australia is this Saturday night. I can't, um, I can't wait to host this. I'm still working most nights um, putting together all the research and all the um, tasting notes and everything. I won't reveal too much of inside, but it's basically, it's just a, it's a full historical document of the society, both here and in the UK, of course. The Australian chapter get a big section in here. And you get, and then of course we have all the tasting, bot, the bottlings in here as well. So, and oh, historical documents from the society throughout history. And then all the taste, the casks and the tasting notes in there. And, and then a photo of the international team at the back. That's something I'm really excited. You get everyone who comes to the taste. It's 50, 56 pages long. Everyone who comes to the event um, on Saturday gets a glossy uh, menu, which is a proper proper historical document you get to take home with you. That's really something nice there. Uh, Fraser is fantastic. Thank you, Fraser. It's a lot of work went into that menu, like a lot of writing and a lot of research and um, old... I've got a box on the floor over there of just... Uh, vintage outturns and unfiltered and and even just writings from people which are now included in that and you get to keep that forever uh, did you get rid of that last ticket as I know not yet there's one there were two tickets left one sold there's still one left we're gonna keep that on the site until Friday um, yeah the SMS <laughs> Cal <laughs> hold on hold on wait for it well not a whole page but it certainly got a, a proper mention in one of the articles the the Lagonda um, if you're going to raffle the, raffle the ticket to just me, I'm sure I can get flights. <laughs> ah, yeah, well, you're welcome to come over for it. Saturday night kicks off at 5.30. Well, we've talked a bit about Brook Laddie. We've talked a bit about Blue Corn. We've talked a bit about sleeper casks. It's a very lighthearted session tonight. Just a chance for us to catch up, have a chat, have a dram. And watch me spill some whiskey on this already grubby tablecloth. Um... Sample bottles if the ticket doesn't get sold. <laughs> I'm sure you could, Johnny. I'll send you back sample bottles with each of the bits of the bits of the dinner courses in them instead of whiskey. Yeah, that'll that'll do it for you. No, nah, I'm kidding. Um, wait, I do land. <laughs> well, I do land every day. Yes. <laughs> Wowza. Um, well, look, there is one left, guys. Um, it's one ticket to the to the vault sixteen eight two evening. Uh. If, if you want to come, you know, but yeah. yeah, that's enough. And that's, 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 there we go. We're, we're done about my hair. We've done the hair bit. We're good. We're good. Uh, this, this stream tonight was probably mostly about my hair, but I'm happy to talk about a few things and hopefully you can learn a few things and join in the chat with me and, and enjoy a few drams. Uh, tomorrow night will be Thursday night. Um, and it'll be, we'll do, we'll do the Thursday night stream eight o'clock normal tomorrow night, which would be great. Uh, Andrew Power, where is it and how much? It's at um, Saturday nights at Bentley Restaurant uh, in Sydney, and it's uh, tickets are seven hundred dollars each, and it includes ten, eleven, twelve whiskies, and a full four course dinner created by the chefs. Uh, there's a lot. There's it's like I said, it's not a cheap ticket. We've got actually Power. If you want to come to um come to the Melbourne Gathering, check that out on the website SMWS dot com dot au slash events smws dot com dot au um there's 
come to the Melbourne gathering. Come to that. That'll be that'll be lots of fun. Um, actually, stuck in David. Yes, he did. That was a hit. that's one of the reasons I go to that barber. He's, he's very good. Uh, Bailey through the ages. <laughs> okay, Bailey brains. You know what? You know what? Fine, fine. Yes, you know what? That that book could exist. I've had so many terrible and uh, and interesting hairstyles, including the time I had a beard, including the time I um had blonde hair, including the time I uh. Had a man bun. Look, it's I've, I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere in the ridiculous hair history of Bailey. So, Barley Brains, I'm going to make that menu, that 56-page menu about my hair, just for you. There you go. <laughs> That's all from me tonight. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, as always. I love doing this 8 o'clock live stream. I love your questions and your comments, even if they're about my hair. They're good fun. Asking questions and learning a few things. Oh, Barley Brains, I'll see you there. Are you in Melbourne that day? On the... Next next Thursday? Oh my god, is it next th oh, Thursday? Oh, Thursday? It's all on the website. Actually, you know what? Before I go, I better just better, better check that. And yes, I use a paper diary. You can you can take that for what it's worth. Here we go. One sec. Here we go. It's faster than the phone. I'm on the phone now. 26. 26. Sorry. 26. 26th of September is the... um. Yes, that's right. 40, uh, yes, Caltay, that's correct. 26th of September is the gathering in Melbourne. That one, we added an extra table. I think it has almost sold out. I'm not sure. I haven't checked today. Um, but there's gathering events all on the website. Love to see you there. Um, Barley Brains, I'll see you on the 26th at our Melbourne gathering. Hit me up. Hit me up. Just shoot me a message. Let me know if you want to come. Uh, Vault 1682 is this Saturday. I'm broadcasting tomorrow night. That's all from me from now. And yes, I know that Robert Akers. I know. Right? And, uh, and we'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you so much for joining in.